Kyrie Irving is a basketball wizard. Irving, step back three. It's like he plays a game within a game. Irving again. Oohs and eyes from the crowd. <laughs> Manages to get the ball back. Putting on a show with a ball handling. Layup and good. Oh. As if he plays hide and seek with defenders, always shielding the ball from their grasp. Now you see me. Now you don't. Or it's like the ballet, where he makes other players tap dance around him, only to break their ankles one crossover later. Oh, no. But what makes Kyrie's handle so slippery and so deadly? What drills did he do to perfect his dribbling? And why can nobody block Irving's shot despite him standing at just six foot three? He got the stuff that will embarrass you, yeah, okay. right? Kyrie got that stuff that make you go home and cry to your mama. Yeah. Well, Irving was born left-handed, but because he attended a strict Catholic school, teachers forbade him from doing things with his naturally stronger hand and forced him to do everything with his right hand. I was getting slapped on the hand for writing with my left oh, hand. Oh, wait, so, yeah, I never knew this. Was, yeah, that was old school. This was in 96. You were left-handed at first? Absolutely. By being ridiculously orthodox, teachers did Kyrie the biggest favor because he was soon able to do everything ambidextrously. Did you, do you write lefty? Yeah, I can do both. Well, yeah, are I you ambidextrous? It makes sense. Yeah, just no, no. both sides yeah. of my brain are unlocked if you're asking. The second big help was that Kyrie's father was a former basketball player. Draderick Irving was a hoop star at Boston University and once had a tryout with the Boston Celtics, after which he played pro basketball in Australia. But more importantly, Draderick instilled a love for basketball in Kyrie, which became his obsession. In fourth grade, I wrote on my wall in the closet, I will play in the NBA. I promise. Kyrie. Kyrie loved hooping more than anything, and he was practicing with his pops all the time. And at first, those practices weren't anything fancy. He just perfected simple moves, crossovers between the legs, behind the back. But he repeated them thousands of times. And then he would work on combinations of those moves and counter moves and chain them together. By the eighth grade, Kyrie realized that what he could do with the basketball was unique and that nobody could handle the rock like he did. And his godfather agreed with that. Irving's godfather is Rod Strickland, a former NBA player and one of the best passers of the 90s. When Strickland saw Irving dribble in the backyard, he told Radrick, this boy is going to make you some money. But Kyrie's road to the NBA wasn't all so straightforward. Kyrie was a small kid, and as a high school freshman, he was only 5'7", skinny, and shot the ball from his hip. He also played for Montclair Kimberly Academy, in the lowest division of the state, and without a single player on the roster taller than 6'1". So, despite Irving growing to 5'10 as a sophomore and averaging 29 points per game, nobody knew who he was. However, that only made him work even harder. And seeking more exposure for Kyrie, his father hooked him up with local AAU coach Sandy Pionin, who was famous for working with NBA players. Pionin put Irving through some pretty bizarre drills, like hopping in different directions while dribbling, left-hand skyhooks from the free-throw line, and full-court one-on-one. But when Kyrie transferred to St. Patrick High School, he was still quite small with a disproportionate head, so they started calling him Squirrel Boy. But as soon as Squirrel Boy started playing, he embarrassed everybody with his handles, because nobody could stay in front of him. And soon enough, colleges started noticing Kyrie. He wasn't playing with the best team in New Jersey, but he was single-handedly killing all these teams. Duke coach Mike Krzyzewski. Then, after averaging 24 points, 5 rebounds, and 7 assists per game as a senior, Kyrie enrolled at Duke. Unfortunately, due to a severe ligament injury in his foot, Irving played just 11 games at Duke. However, that was enough for everybody to see that this kid was the most talented young player in the world. On top of his silky dribbling and Fred Astaire footwork, Irving shot 50, 40, 90 in college. And nobody was surprised when the Cavaliers selected him with the first overall pick in the 2011 NBA draft. But despite fulfilling his lifelong dream of making the NBA and becoming a millionaire, Kyrie wasn't satisfied, and he never stopped working. Immediately after the draft, he reached out to a famous trainer, Michael Lancaster, who has gyms all over the U.S. and has worked with many famous NBA players, most notably Dwayne Wade. Even though Irving became a self-made ball-handling artist, it was his work with Lancaster that pushed him into a new stratosphere. Lancaster wanted Irving to be a little more ambidextrous, with not only his dribble, but with how he protects the ball with his offhand. 
But Kyrie's one of the only people, he'll let you play. He'd rather play defense on offense. He's defending the ball and keeping the ball away from you. Mm -hmm. He picks, he starts his point of attack, and he lets you dictate how this is going to go. Yep. Lancaster made Kyrie keep his dribble so tight that he could swat away opponents' hands like flies while he handled the basketball. But that was just one of the things they worked on. What Lancaster really improved with Kyrie was not his hands, but his feet. A lot of times, players slow down from 60 miles an hour first to 40, then to 20, then to 10, and then finally zero. But after one workout, Kyrie was able to go from 60 to zero. I think that's what really separates him. Not only his hands, but his feet are incredible, to the point where he can stop on a dime and change directions like a running back. Lancaster. It's not his handle, though. It's Kai's footwork with his hand. Drop hezzy, drop hezzy, tween, tween, hezzy pull. This emergency breaks. <laughs> One of the biggest secrets about Kyrie's God handles is not something you can see on TV, but you'll feel it if you ever have a chance to meet him and shake his hand. He's got really strong hands. When he shakes your hand, you know it. Brad Stevens. I've contested some of Kyrie's jump shots, and we've locked hands. And this shit's hit nothing but net. That strength allows Irving to keep the ball on a string, despite defenders repeatedly prying at it. Not even somebody like Kawhi Leonard can poke it away from Kyrie. Irving drives inside, shot is good! Oh. Irving averages just 2.6 turnovers per game in his career, which is astonishing for a high-usage point guard. For example, Harden averages 3.7 turnovers per game, Westbrook is at 4.1, and even Steph Curry, another guy with phenomenal handles, turns the ball over more than three times per game. But strong hands and protecting the ball with his offhand are just a part of the reason why he's rarely turning the ball over. Another big aspect of that is Kyrie's extremely low center of gravity when he's dribbling. Kai is so poised and balanced that even Michael Jackson wouldn't be mad at this smooth criminal. And another big thing about Kyrie is his rhythm. Kyrie's feet are always moving, and the timing between his step and his dribble is always in order, allowing him to make reactionary moves without losing control. Like a drummer or a ballroom dancer, it's almost impossible to knock Irving out of rhythm, and that's why he can change pace whenever he pleases. But how did Kyrie achieve this surgical precision? He used a specific drill that he copied from three-time All-Star point guard Baron Davis. After watching a documentary about Davis, Irving learned that tying a plastic bag around his basketball could take his ball handling skills to the next level. Inside the bag, the ball becomes very slippery, which makes maintaining the grip and maneuvering the ball a lot tougher. The bag also cuts the amount of bounce the ball has, which made Irving develop more strength in his wrists and forearms. He also learned how to dribble the ball with just one finger at a time to strengthen his fingers. But that's not all. Another unusual dribbling drill that helped Kyrie develop dribbling and rhythm was dribbling two balls at the same time. He does very simple in and out, left, right, behind the back dribbles, but he does it with both hands and two balls, and everything is synchronized, like he's a conductor in front of a big orchestra. And lastly, what makes Kyrie's handle so vicious is his overall game. If he wasn't such a deadly shooter, and if he didn't have high basketball IQ, his dribbling wouldn't be so devastating, because his defenders would just sag off him and let him shoot. While his highlights look like one of his infamous Uncle Drew commercials, Kyrie's offense is actually very simple, and he tries to take shots after one or two dribbles. What I want fans to realize is that when I make a move, it's really a simple move. It's just done with pace, and it's done off a counter of something. I only do those fancy moves when someone cuts me off and makes me do it, because I have counters to every move that I do. Kyrie. And when you watch the tape on Kyrie, you quickly realize that his words are true and that there isn't much pattern in how he dribbles the ball. He simply reacts to what the defense gives him. Irving doesn't know what he's going to do, and this unpredictability makes him unguardable. He changes speeds to keep people off balance. Perhaps the best way to put it into words, he has an uncanny ability to go one way, stop on a dime, right to left, left to right, whichever, and still be on balance and get by you. It's unpredictable. You just don't know which way he's going. Steph Curry. And Kyrie's three over Steph in 2016 might be the most famous play, but it's not the nastiest. That baseline move that I hit on Steph, head fake, jab, head fake, jab, drop, drop it again and shake. You spin it, I spun it, I dropped it and caught it with my left hand and spun, and then I faded and saw KD on the baseline. But Kyrie is not just the best ball handler in NBA history. He might also have the craftiest layup package ever. Working on Thomas, gets around. 
shoved him up under and in. Oh, what a move for Kyrie. When he was a little kid, he played on a basket with a broken backboard, with pieces missing. And that's where he learned to put extra spin on the ball. What y'all don't get to see is him explain to you that he grew up playing on a rim that was missing pieces on the backboard. So that's how he learned those weird angles to twist the ball off of because his backboard was missing pieces. Was missing. That's crazy. Also, because he was usually one of the smallest players in every game, Kyrie learned to shield the ball with his body and find little spots to get the ball off the glass while preventing the players from blocking his shots. He doesn't practice typical things that other guys practice. When he shoots layups as part of a practice, he'll mix in the degree of difficulty that's way harder from everybody else. Former coach Brad Stevens. Because Kyrie is ambidextrous and because he can jump off either leg, he can finish in more ways than any other player in the NBA. And that's why he almost never gets his shot blocked. He's like Allen Iverson's handles, Kobe's footwork, and Ray Allen's shooting all in one package. Kyrie makes basketball look like art and is, without any doubt, the greatest ball handler of all time.